I came to bury sleep. Curse it, spite that ever I was born to set it. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? This is the excellent foppery of the world. There's always, perhaps, a, a number of molecules in you that are waiting to meet something or someone. And it's perhaps more a question of recognition than, than discovering something. There must have been something in me that needed that form of expression. I know as an adult, whenever I see a, a, a child's imagination or stillness or growth, you can sometimes literally see the brain of a child growing. There are moments of extraordinary stillness and, and concentration that one must not interrupt as an adult. And what, I've, what I find so beautiful about Shakespeare's language is that it is uninterruptible. And when I joined the Royal Shakespeare Company and started to work with these great directors and finally came on stage, of course, my first few lines were, were just a few words. Uh, I was shaking with terror, just a few words. Uh, but eventually, of course, I graduated to speeches and, and great characters, thank goodness. And you realize that if you allow yourself to breathe the language, understand it, and, and feel a beautiful sense of urgency to communicate it, it is uninterruptible. That's what I love about Shakespeare. You cannot interrupt it, you cannot rewrite it, you cannot mangle it, it's all there. And it is still there for the actor to tap into like a, a transfusion of extraordinary energy. How can one of the most profoundly accurate maps of human behavior ever become irrelevant or obsolete? It's like, I can't come, I, I mean, the, the gormlessness of saying it's irrelevant and old fashioned is beyond belief. It's breathtakingly stupid. It is the perfect map of patterns of human behavior written in an age where the English language and brain was growing, not shrinking. Where our imaginations and our appetite for uh, our curiosity, our, our appetite for, for, for learning um, was growing like, like the mind of a child I was alluding to. And it's still growing. There is such a, a, a wealth of, of enriching knowledge and patterns there and touchstones that we can, that we can use. And we throw it away generation after generation. We throw it away. I think it's rather unfortunate that the late great Buzz Goodbody was the only female director that I worked with at a crucial time in my development. And I think that the female eye can see the bigger picture, whereas the male eye can get lost in the details. That might be contradictory to lazy received thinking, but actually it's true. The female eye sees the bigger picture. The male eye gets lost in the details. That's probably why Buzz was the perfect director for Hamlet, because she put it in, in such a universal context. There is a story that I love telling, and I'm wondering whether the person involved is even watching this program. But one Saturday morning, I was walking across the fields in Snitterfield, and I saw a young woman walking in my direction. So being a gentleman, I decided to turn right to make absolutely certain to her that I was not walking towards her. I would not interfere with, in her reverie she turned in the same direction. So I turned that way, she turned that way. She was tracking me. And we met in the middle of the field. She was not going to let me walk past her. And she looked into my eyes and she said, I saw Hamlet last night. How did you know about me? 
That was one of the most beautiful things ever, ever said to me. I don't read reviews anymore. That's what I love. That's what I love. Where Shakespeare will allow you, as an actor, to reach out to anyone in these red seats and for that person to feel, I am not alone. This person knows everything I'm going through. I'm going to sit here and be nourished and looked after. It's quite wonderful. And I think that the forensics of exploring a character start here. There's no escaping it. They start here. I hope there are actors watching this. They start here, boys and girls. It's a promise.